23. Shaul looks straight at them and said, now he's in the Sanhedrin, okay? Shaul looks straight at them and said, Brothers, I've been discharging my obligations to God with a perfectly clear conscience right up until today. But the Kochen Hagadol, the high priest, and Ananias, ordered those standing near him to strike him on the mouth. The high priest is ordering the guys around Paul to hit him in the face, in the mouth. Then Shaul said to him, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. Will you sit there judging me according to the Torah, yet in violation of the Torah you order me to be struck? There's a lot going on in this, in this couple of verses here. Whitewashed wall. Listen to this. We're going to read verse 1 to 16. It says, yeah, The word of Adonai came to me. Human being, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who prophesy. Tell those prophesying out of their own thoughts, listen to what Adonai says. That's quite a scary statement. The problem is, at this point in, in Israel, you have prophets, false prophets, prophesying everything's going to be okay. And you have Ezekiel running around saying, everything's not going to be okay. You guys need to wake up. It's not going to be okay. Babylon is coming. And you have these prophets saying, ah, don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Adonai Elohim says, Woe to the vile prophets who follow their own spirits and things which they have not seen. Israel, your prophets have been like jackals among ruins. You prophets have not gone up to the breaks in the barricade or repaired it for the house of Israel so that they can stand fast in battle on the day of Adonai. Their visions are futile and their divination is false. They say, Adonai says, when Adonai has not sent them, yet they hope that the word will be confirmed. Haven't you had a futile vision and spoken a false divination when you say, Adonai says, and I have not spoken? Therefore, here is what Adonai Elohim, the God of creation, does say. Because you have spoken futilities and seen falsehoods, therefore I am against you, says Adonai Elohim. My hand will be against the prophets who have futile visions and produce false divinations. They will not be allowed into the council of my people or be written in the register of the house of Israel or into the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am Adonai Elohim. They deserve this because they have led my people astray. By saying there is peace when there is no peace. If someone builds a wall without mortar, they plaster it with, with whitewash to make it appear strong. Tell these plasterers that a cloudburst is coming with huge hailstones and gale force winds and the wall will fall down. Then the people will ask you, where is the whitewash you used to plaster it? Hmm. And this is what Paul is saying to the high priest. You whitewashed wall. God will strike you. He's, he's saying, he's, he's, he's saying to him, can you not see the foundations that you have are completely weak? You know, we've been building a wall at our house. And I know a little bit about wall building now. I even wanted to lay some bricks, but they wouldn't let me because then their warranty would be void. But anyway. I really wanted to lay some bricks. But what they do, right, is they build, they dig a trench in the ground and they fill it with concrete and reinforcing. Why? Because they don't want the wall to fall over. And then over here, they build the wall. And depending on how high you want it, it's one brick or two brick in width. If this foundation is not there. And he said to me, he said, you know, there's a house by the Boki Park here that they've had to rebuild their wall three times because of the clay. And they're obviously not doing a good enough job of this. Well, they didn't build a big enough foundation for it because it keeps falling over. But he's saying, build a wall without mortar. Then they plaster it. So they got the wall right. They got the wall up. The wall is up and it's just standing there. Yay! But the wall is full of cracks. And you can visibly see the cracks. And it's probably leaning to one side. <laughs> and he's saying, all you guys did was whitewash the thing. You pretty much painted over it. And now, it looks nice. Because it's whitewashed. But inside, it's not that nice. Eh? 
Because the mortar is not right, the foundation is not right, and when a wind comes, that thing's over. It's gone. And this, uh, this brings me to my point, that we need to ensure that we have a strong foundation. What is our foundation? It's the Word, right? The Word in our faith is our foundation. Hmm? Right. It's Yeshua. But this, what we build, is completely up to us. We can build hastily. We can do it quickly. I'm not going to mention anything of this place, but we can build it quickly and we can make mistakes. And if you don't have the right foundation, then it's just going to fall over. Which leads me to another thing. Imagine if you're producing fruit in your life. Kids, and you have an apple, and the apple gets all moldy and black and purple and got funny fluffy stuff growing on it. Is that nice? No. no. What if I just what if I just painted that red? Hello? What if I just painted that red and gave it to you? Would it look nice? It will look nice. It'll be red and shiny. I'll use high gloss paint. It will look yummy. But if you bite into it, you're probably going to die. Because you don't eat paints. See? It's bad for you. This is the point, though. We can't address the symptoms. That's what he was saying. You just address the symptoms of the cracked wall. You paint it over it. It's like your fruit. If your fruit is rotten, you can't just paint it. That's addressing the symptom. If there's rotten fruit, I promise you, there's rotten roots. Hmm. You've got to go to the root cause analysis. <laughs> and no business. Yeah? Mm. That's right. That's right. It looks good, but it's all dead on the inside. That's right. There's just bones on the inside that mean nothing. There's no life in it. That's beautiful. You see, and the thing as well with this with this tree, right? If you have your fruit, that's fruit. That's my drawing of fruit. And this fruit is rotten. Sad face, children. It's coming from a rotten root. I've got a plum tree at home. Okay, and that plum tree, this one whole section died, <coughs> didn't give any more fruit. There was like just this dead stick coming out. Everything else had leaves and, and some little fruit, but that one section was dead. Why? Well, something got, yeah, I don't know what it was, I'm not a botanist or whatever you call it, but something got, yeah, whether it was a weed or a dead root, something affected this area. And if you're going to allow these, these weeds to grow up and take over, the weed is sin. If you keep that weed growing, this is all going to die. You're going to have no more fruit. You have to ask yourself, what is the fruit of your life? How much fruit are you producing? And is it just painted over? Yeah? Where are you? Isaiah or Ezekiel. Yeah, to make it appear strong. Yeah, the mortar. Yes. That's nice. That's actually nice. I like that. Mm. Build walls without mortar, yeah? Yes. So what do you think? What do you think 
then what do you think Paul is saying to the high priest? What do you think he's saying then? You whitewashed wall. He's left something out. He's left something out, or he hasn't got the proper foundation, or he's just made everything appear okay. That high priest, you're going to see now what he says, what Paul says to him. The high priesthood changed almost every few months at that time. It was terrible. You actually see Paul saying, sorry, I didn't even realize you were the high priest <laughs> when he spoke to him. That's how bad it was. No, I don't think he was sarcastic. I think he was actually genuine. Because remember, he had, he had come to, to the high priest most likely at a late hour. It probably took him. Paul? We don't know. Let's carry on reading and we'll get to that part. 